My phone stopped working properly. It overheated. The battery ran down very quickly. And when I would call someone, they would answer immediately, without it ever ringing. My name is Thanasis Koukakis. I have significant experience in investigative reporting, exposing how the Greek government enables financial crime. I contacted one of my sources to find out if there was something wrong. He said, you're under surveillance by the National Intelligence Service, AIP. That was the moment when Thanasis Koukakis found out he was being spied on by Greece's National Intelligence Service, AIP. He never found out why. The wiretapping by AIP is the legal half of a surveillance scandal that has dogged the Greek government for the past year. The other half, entirely illegal, relates to something called Predator, a new spy software which infects the target's phone through a deceptive internet link. Koukakis was hit by both. I received a text message with a link to a financial news article. I clicked on it and my phone was infected with Predator. My phone was working fine, nothing abnormal. So if it hadn't have been for the reporting by Inside Story, I may not have known anything about Predator's existence. Our involvement in this story began by accident. We saw two reports. One from Citizen Lab, and another from Meta, the social media platform. Both reports mention Predator and the use of the spyware in Greece. So we at Inside Story focused on how this was happening. For example, a target might receive a text message with a link to an article from fseen.online instead of fseen.gr. And if they clicked on the link, the spy software would immediately be installed on their phone. Kokakis read our piece. He got in touch with Citizen Lab, and they confirmed his phone was infected. We then reported his story, exposing that Predator was indeed being used in European territory against a European citizen. Despite the reporting by Inside Story about Koukakis, the surveillance saga only gained traction in the mainstream media after the revelation of a second target, a politician, Nikos Andrulakis. And there was still more to come. A leftist newspaper, Documento, claimed attempts had been made to sweep up dozens more into the spyware net, including various newspaper editors and members of Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis' own cabinet. The implication that the Mitsotakis government was behind some shadowy methods took its toll. With the revelation that uh, Mr. Andrulakis' phone was infected by the um, predator uh, spyware, there was a first resignation of the chief of the prime minister's um, office. He was responsible for monitoring um, ape. And the second one to, um, to resign was the chief of AIP. The official line was that they resigned because someone had to take the political responsibility for what happened. It wasn't the intention of the government to indicate that, you know, there was a bit of a complicity to it. But that's exactly what it did. And it wasn't just the high-profile resignations, but the role that Prime Minister Mitsotakis himself has played in this spyware scandal. Soon after his party came to power in 2019, it moved AIP under the direct control of the Prime Minister's office and amended the director's job spec so Mitsotakis could hand-pick the candidate. And just as Thanasis Koukakis was filing a petition to find out why he was surveilled by the state, the government reformed that law so citizens could no longer find out why they were being tapped. This sequence of events is, I would say, telling. I cannot put my finger on uh, the actual culprit because I don't have proof. But look, there is a series of seemingly unrelated events um, which tend to um, compose a specific puzzle um, and if you put all the pieces together one by one and look at it from a distance, then you will realize that possibly um, this was planned. 
As for the government's narrative on Predator, it keeps changing. First, it said it knew nothing of the spyware. Then it said it did know that Predator existed, but the authorities had nothing to do with it. And then finally, an admission that the government had indeed authorized wiretaps for reasons of national security, but they weren't using Predator, and it was all legal. The Ministry for Communication and Information agreed to let us interview the Deputy Minister. We just had to agree on a time. Six days in, we're still waiting. Before we give up on this, we thought we'd try one last time. Hi, hi. This is Flo Phillips from the Listening Post at Al Jazeera English. Okay. If you can't make time for us, we're just going to have to say that the Minister refused to meet with us. Okay, but I, I didn't tell you that the Minister refused to speak. The truth is that the, the Minister has fixed interviews right now. If you can't make time for us, we're just going to have to say that the Minister refused to meet with us. Now we know how Sophie Untfeld felt. She's the European Parliament's rapporteur investigating the use of spyware in the European Union. Like us, she came to Athens to ask some hard questions of the government. Authorities are not willing to share official information with us. Her team got the runaround too. In my opinion, this government is not taking responsibility because nobody is demanding them to. Meaning, mainly the mainstream media. They don't hold the government responsible for so many things. Instead, what we've seen is sustained efforts to obstruct investigative journalism. Whenever someone tries to oppose what the government is promoting as the truth, they're almost demonized. There are many cases where even publicly, even in parliament, the, the, the prime minister has attacked uh, members of the press. A characteristic example is his mention of daily newspaper documento um, as a national uh, slanderer. Ο ίδιος ο εθνικός οικοφάτης, ο οποίος δημοσιοποιεί κάθε εβδομάδα και από μια καινούργια λίστα. It's very hard being a, um, a journalist that actually wants to investigate and expose wrongdoings. Υπόθεση των υποκλοπών. The wiretapping case is a victory for small and independent media, as opposed to the mainstream outlets in Greece. And to all those trying to manipulate the press, government, certain publishers and media owners, the message is clear. When journalists do their job, the truth does come out. The truth is coming out, and not just in the reporting of small, independent Greek outlets. The surveillance story has caught the attention of international media too. But the Mitsotakis government isn't taking corrective action in a hurry. It's focused on the upcoming elections in May, hoping that, by then, the story might have lost some of its heat. We are up against a, um, a tsunami of, I would call it, democratic backsliding in this country. The justice system is not as independent as it should be. The media landscape is highly, highly problematic and biased towards one side. And those of us that try to communicate this to a wider audience are often targeted by mainstream media. If it was up to me, the spiral scandal should have been the number one defining factor in the upcoming elections, but um, I don't see it happening. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more media analysis on the US, Taiwan, China, or anywhere across the globe, we have plenty to offer. Just click here.